um when we talk about working in christ it's not uh, such a major deal for me i always say that um when you become born again it's all by his grace mm -hmm. it's all by his mercy it's all by his love if we said it was by our own works or our own efforts we would just be but liars and that's why tonight I'd like, um, if I'd give our topic tonight an intro, a, a, a topic, I'd maybe say that I'd call it a, it does, it does not take a trophy, okay? It doesn't take a trophy for us to walk right with Christ. All we do is, first of all, each one of us has accepted that they have sinned. Because if you hadn't accepted that you have sinned, we wouldn't have found a reason to accept the Lord Jesus Christ to come and save us all. After accepting that we have sinned, we've made a decision and we have come to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth. He died, he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And after rising from the dead, he rose and ascended to heaven. Then what we have done, the bold step that you people took recently, sometime last month, is that you confessed and accepted that you have sinned and were ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your lives for your sins to be forgiven. And hence, being given the right to be called the children of God. Now, um, I'd like someone, a volunteer, to very fast read for us Romans chapter 3, verse 23. I believe you have your Bibles. Eh, in your seko, na in your primo. You have your Bibles. Nani ako na Bible? Atusome, Romans 3, 23. Okay, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, this is what the scripture tells us. It tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. I hope you guys have a notebook, a Bible, and a, a, a Bible and a pen. Mkonayo, Vicky, you got a Bible? Yes. You're putting down notes? Yes. Ian, are you putting down notes? Ian, yes. Steve Unandika, are you, are you putting down notes? Yes. Winnie? Oh. Okay, good. Thanks, Winnie. I've seen your response. Huh? So, uh, in the book of Romans, you're told that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. Uh, when we talk about all, the reason I would uh, want us to look at all is that some people may assume that they are too young, they are too innocent to, 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 to confess that they are sinners. Huh? But in scripture, we are told that all have sinned. So when we talk about all, it means that everybody is counted a sinner right from the time each one of us was in our mother's wombs. That is even before we were born. So even before you are born, you are considered to be a sinner. Why are we considered to be sinners? Remember what our father, uh, our father Adam and our mother Eve did at the Garden of Eden? They rebelled against God, they sinned. And from that moment on, we are counted as sinners. From the time you're in your mother's womb, when you are born, you are counted as a sinner. And if any one of us claimed to be without sin, We'll just be deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not going to be in us. This we find in the book of First John, chapter one and verse eight. Vicky, kindly read read for us First John chapter one verse eight, please. Okay, I'm going to put it. Ah yeah. Utapata uko kwa New Testament. Pardon? Uh, New Testament. 
Una yo pali fast fast John in a pakikana. Eh. Ah, yeah. Vas vas one chapter. Sorry, chapter one was it. Okay. If we say okay. that we have not done <laughs> ourselves and there is no truth in us. Thank you so much. If you say that we, do, we haven't seen, seen we just be but liars and there is no truth in us because we are all considered sinners right from the time we were in our mother's wombs. Huh? Then in verse 9 of the same chapter, we are told that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So, Stevo, what do you have to do in order for us to be righteous? Stevo. Winnie. We simply have to confess our sins. Once you confess our sins, God is faithful and is just. We confess that we have sinned. How do we sin? Sin is anything that we say, anything that we do, or anything that we think that does not make god happy what are some of the things that we that we say or that we do that do not please god when you steal steal thank you ian stealing something else lying Bull, lying bullying something else what about the things we think what are some of the things we think how do we seem to how do we seem through our thoughts we think of bad, bad thoughts. For instance, um, pornography. Yes. There's, there's, there's a lot of things that there, there are a lot of sins that we get involved with. Yes, suicide. Suicide is sin. Ukisha jiwa. Iyo 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 ni sin. Sin ya wini. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Huh? When you're jealous, Sindio, Labda mtu ameenda, we labda umepata B plus, na mwenye wa unashinda, mepata A minus, you can't even talk to them. You're so bitter. There's so much bitterness. Huh? Hata umtukani, but inside your heart, there's so much that is going on that is not godly. Okay. Now maybe you see somebody, maybe Someone in class, Sayote Hana Bairo, Hana, they are always borrowing and begging for stuff. Ukimwana ukoza, ata usemi, but kwa reyako unasema, ndiye uyu. All that is sin. We may not be saying it, we may not be doing it, but in our thoughts, we are sinning against God. Tuko pamoja? Munelewa. So, all of us, thanks Winnie, thanks guys. All of us have sinned and fallen short of, glory, of the glory of God. And the worst we can do is think that any one of us is so right with God because none of us is right with God because we are still in the flesh. Okay. There's a tendency of us always wanting to do what is wrong. I want someone to be honest with me. Welcome, Joy. Um, nani ya shai gonga mtu hapa? Ian? Ian? Yes? Are you in any sports at school? Yes. Which, what, 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 what do you play? Or what are you involved in as sports? Football. You're in football, eh? Yes. Vicky, are you in any sports at school? No, we don't have sports. In your school, there there's no sports. Yeah, bado jaeka. Okay. Umenyambeko grade? Six. Okay. Ah, uh, Stevo, when you kuna sports? Winnie, when you kuna sports? Yes. Yes. Okay. Umenyambeko. Iyan umenyambeko. 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 Umenyamb
kuna yes. kitu mtu ashaifanya kwa football pitch and you felt like you just want to punch them yes what did they do they tackled me they tackled you and you they tackled you and you were like you felt like you wanted to punch their face huh? yes because you were very angry isn't you? yes and uh, even as a christian becoming angry is not unusual but you know that anger is sin yes anger is sin huh? so as long as you're in the in the in the flesh huh, it is very hard to avoid sin okay so what do we do as believers wakati unajua umefanya dhambi what do we do we go to god we confess that we have sinned we repent our sins and god is always faithful to forgive us huh? but does that mean that we become notorious you are always doing bad things because god's grace is sufficient no no we still have to try our very best to walk in obedience okay okay um so uh boys and girls tonight i'd like to encourage us huh? this is the work of faith huh? and we cannot do it on our own because it is not by our own power that we are able to live right with god it's not by our power it's not by our might but by the holy spirit of god who is the holy spirit god sent us the actually the holy spirit is god eh? he is the way that god comes into our lives eh? and he help us to live right with him eh? being a christian being a believer does not mean that you are not going to go through trials through tribulations through temptations hey kwanza when you were boarding school Sengine unaona kama mtu amekuja tu ame labda you have washed your shirts but and when you go back to the lens unapata shati yako ishaibiwa and you are like god uko wapi god is always there with us huh? but what he has promised us is there is no test there is no temptation there is no trial that is going to allow to come our way that you are not going to be able to overcome so it's upon us to believe it's upon us to believe that god is always there for us god is very gentle god nim soft if it's upon you to make a choice god is all powerful he's all knowing he's all present but he will not force himself into your life you have to allow him you have to welcome him to come and be lord over your life it's upon you to let him take over to let him take charge eh? he'll not force himself so how how do you allow god to come into our lives by living right and by obedience eh? so as new believers and even as mature believers eh, there are some things that you expected to do in order to grow each one of us here was a baby sometime before or some years back eh? For, for many of you very few years ago for me very many years ago i was a baby also has anyone seen how a baby is taken care of here winnie have yes. you ever seen anyone take care of a baby vicky how was it how do you take care of a baby joy hi joy hi you're most welcome you're in, you're in grade in class 8 you in class 8 going to form 1 no i was in class 7 going to class oh, 8 oh, oh nice karibu sana thank you have you ever seen a baby being taken care of yes how how do you take care of a baby first yes you need to make sure they have eaten yes they have slept at the right time yes and their diaper is changed when it's yes. dirty yes yes and they have taken a bath Yes. Have have you with Joy have have you ever witnessed somebody taking a, a baby for the for the checkups at the clinic? No. When you take a baby to a checkup to the clinic for checkup, there are things they look at. Huh? Is the baby gaining weight? Is the baby growing taller? Are they feeding well? Are they falling sick often? Because our intention as a parent and even as the doctors, we want to see this baby move from one milestone to another. Guys, you, are you you're getting me, or is it maybe some of you have not handled babies? Huh? 
when a parent, when a mother or a father has a baby, you want to see your baby grow from one milestone to another. Even you guys right now, you're in school. Some of you are in primary school. We are waiting to see you transit to high school. Those that are in high school, we also want to see you transit into college. Okay. We always want to see growth. Huh? And in order for growth to happen, growth will not just happen automatically. There are things that we need to do in order to grow healthy, in order to be wholesome. And tonight I want to mention a few things that we need to do in order to be able to grow in our faith in, 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 in our faith as Christ, as Christians. And um, uh, to put it in very simple terms, I'd like to talk about uh, something I call quiet time. You as an individual, you have a personal relationship with Christ. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it becomes a personal relationship. So Christ becomes your friend, becomes your buddy. And there's no way you're not going to have time to spend with your friend. Huh? So how do you spend time with your friend? I know some of us may go for a movie. Some may just sit at home and, you know, spend some time with a friend. You talk. Some go to church together and many other activities. Huh? So there are those activities that God desires of us. He desires that we make time for him. We make room for him. We do some activities with him. And one interesting thing with God is he's never tired. He never gets exhausted of you. However much time you have for God, he's always there for you. So as believers, how do we spend time with God in order to grow? Uh, I'd like uh, to talk about quiet time. I need someone to tell me what, what, what do you mean by quiet time in your own language? What is quiet time? Nani ya jongea? I believe I like interaction. I'm not good in monologue. What is quiet time? Anyone? I'm not an English teacher. Steve, you want to tell us what is quiet time? Uh, quiet time is uh, staying in a room that is quiet, but you're on the you're the one staying there. You're quiet, but you're you just stay in this in the room you're quiet you don't want any interruptions thank you so much yes joy Okay, quiet time is like meditation. Is where yes. you're in a quiet room. Yes. You're seated and yes. just talking to God. Awesome. Anyone else? Uh, I think um, I really like the way you two have put it. Huh? Uh, quiet time is just being intentional. You're there in that quiet space all alone, but you have an intention. You want to have a moment when you can talk to God, you can listen to God, and you meditate on what you are hearing from God. I know you guys have heard of people over or have heard people say that I had the voice of God. Huh? I don't know whether they all talk the truth, but God speaks to his people. But in order for God to speak to you, you must have an intentional relationship. You must you must create that specific time, that special time that God is able to visit you, to visit your spirit. He can speak in a voice. You can hear a voice. Sometimes he just speaks, you know, you, in, in your feelings, you can just feel that is God talking something or telling me something. Huh? But to make it easy, uh, someone read for us Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Winnie, would that somewhere? Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Okay, let me read it for the sake of time. So in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, we read that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off 
to a solitary place where he prayed, where he prayed. So Jesus took his own quiet time where he went to seek the face of God, away from everyone else, away from the disciples, away from the crowd. He just wanted to have his own personal quiet time with God. Yeah? So quiet time is always very important. Uh, besides quiet time, let me very fast. Uh, wow, time is really gone. Huh? Let me also speak to us about uh, some steps that we need to do, that we need to take uh, in order to be able to grow as believers. Huh? Uh, the first step I'd like to discuss with us is about uh, we need to go to church and to fellowship with others. Once you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can't just keep to yourself. You need to go out there. You need to join a church. You need to join a fellowship. Fellowship, see your parents, pekeao, sorry. You should also go to, for fellowship where you're able to share with others. Huh? what God has done in your life, and they also share with you about what God has done in their lives. Huh? We find this in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25, which says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day draw near. So Christ is requesting us to make sure that we meet at all times in order to be able to encourage one another. As Christians, you also go through hard times and trying times, but when we fellowship, we are able to help one another to grow. Uh, some other scriptures where we see about uh, fellowshipping, where it's very important for us to fellowship and to go to church, we can find this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Uh, those that are putting down notes, uh, you can maybe uh, highlight these uh, verses. Uh, Matthew 18, 20. There's Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. There's Romans 10, 17. Acts 2, 42. You can find time and go through those scriptures. Uh. So let us always, even like what you're doing right now, this is a kind of a fellowship where we share and you're able to grow from what we discuss here as a group, and even from what we learn, what we hear from the preachers, from the teachers, from the apostles, it's, it's going to always help us to learn to grow. But you also need to be very careful because not everyone who claims to speak the truth is speaking the truth. Eh? So we also need to ask God to give us wisdom in order to be able to know, to have discernment, to know whom to listen to and whom not to listen to. Uh, the other way we'd be able to grow as Christians is by reading your Bible. We each have a Bible. Steve, do you have a Bible? Steve? Yes. Good. Joy, you have a Bible? Joy? Yes, I do. How often do you read your Bible? Mostly when I go to church. On Sunday? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Winnie, how often do you read your Bible? When I go to church. On Sunday. Then you go tuck it in your in the drawer, and the next time you go remove it is on Sunday morning. Ian? Ati? Wakati mambo imekuwa magumu. Na unataka goda kusaidie. Come on, yes. your exams, Indio. Yes. I like you. I like your honesty. Vicky? Um, like, there's a summer, like, kila usiku. Uh-huh. So much just a sort of scripture. Okay. You do that every day? Yeah. Oh, oh, I like that. Do you do it as a family or do you do it by yourself? No, to me, me and sister. Eh? You make sure you make time for fellowship every evening. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I should become your neighbor. Victor? Nikuje? I do that. You do that every day. I rarely do that. Oh, you rarely read your Bible. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, I'd like uh, 
Vicky, read for us Joshua 1.8. Au mwenye atapata wa kwanza inuwe mkono. Si mnajua kuinuwa mkono? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Mtu wakipata inuwe mkono? Au wasome? Joshua 1.8, someone? Be sure. Yes. That's the book of the law. Yes. Is always read. Is always read. Yes. In your worship. Yes. Study it day and night. Yes. Yes. And make sure that you obey everything written in it. Yes. Thank you so much. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Boys and girls, it's God commanding us uh, that we need to read the book of the law every day. It has to be habitual. In order for you to grow as a Christian, kama husomi Bible, oh, utaka atu hivo. Umeno watu wenye wanaendaga kwa hizo mama chachi za kupanda mbegu, za mirako, they don't want to read the Bible. So whatever the preacher tells them, they believe. Ukweli wanaamini. Uongo wanaamini. But when you read the Bible for yourself, you have all the truth. So none is going to, to take you, uh, none is going to, is coming to, will be able to play with your mind and you're going to be able to grow in, in spirit and in truth. So we have to make it a habit to read the Bible every day. How do we start to read the Bible? We can start with maybe the easiest book in the Bible, like uh, maybe the book of John. I believe the book of John is quite easy. Make it intentional every day when you have your quiet time. However much, some may be able to get half an hour. Some may be able to get 10 minutes. Some may not even have the space, but you can make it intentional. Ata kama ukisharu dishule, wakati lights zimezimu wana ukopeke yako kwa kwa bed. Just say a prayer. Then during the day, find some time to read the Bible. If you're able to do both at the same time, well and good, you go ahead, but make it habitual. Uneza soma, John chapter 1, ukeza kumaliza. Bora usisome tu kumaliza, usome umaliza na uandastand. Make sure you read it and you understand. Then you meditate. Ambia mungu wa kusaidie. Iyo scripture umesoma, how would you apply it into your life? Or what is God trying to tell you in that scripture? By reading the Bible often, a lot of times, don't even think so, much, so hard about it. God will keep revealing himself to you through his word. You're going to see things happening in your life. Ukumbuke, oh, kumbe indio God alikuwa na niambia kwa ile scripture nilisoma last week Wednesday. Okay? The other way we are going to be able to grow is to be able to obey God's word. However much you read the word, but you don't apply it. It's the same. It, it, it's, it's just like you're not reading the word. We should not only be readers and, and speakers of the word, but we should always be doers of the word. What the scripture tells us. God is very just. God is very fair. There's nothing that God asks us to do that he knows that we cannot be able to do. He knows that we can do all things. Because Christ is our strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens, strengthens us. Uh? I know there are some habits uh, that uh, can be a bit difficult to overcome. Kuna mtu akiona tu 50 bob. Kama mama yake ya 50 bob. Kwa kibeti. Atapata tu asha chukua. Aende PlayStation. Mwingine, when people are watching the, the funny movies, uh, you are like, utaki kuona but you just find yourself wanting to go back there to see what is happening in the, in the, in the movies that are unacceptable. We are told that Christ came to help us. Let us take it to him in prayer. Admit to him. I know I am weak in one, two, three areas, but I believe that you are able to help me to overcome. And God is fair. God is just. He's going to help us to be able to conquer all our trials, tribulations, and temptations. So let us always 
put our very best op our very best option to obey God's word. Now, the other part, the other thing I would want for us to apply in order to be able to grow as believers. Huh? Boys and girls, wherever you are, kindly breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Nani bado wana breathe in? Nani asha breathe out? Kamu me breathe out, niambia ni me breathe out. You are still breathing in? I me breathe out. Thank you, Ian. Nani mungina me breathe out? You are still breathing in? Vicky, thank you, Vicky. Winnie, thank you. Aha, uh -huh. Vicky, thank you. We all, we've all breathed out, huh? Yeah. Nani anataka kunyambia bado wana breathe in? Tukuja tuku, tuku, tuku risasi. Inetua ku risasi? Rasis, re, risasi. Well, iyo wadi menipotea. There's no way you can just breathe in and you're not breathing out. Okay. So, a lot is being put into you. You are being taught a lot by your teachers, by your mentors, by the word of God. When you pray, God speaks to you. So as a believer, you are growing and you are maturing and you have a lot of content in you. When you have received all this in able to make you a better and stronger believer, my daughters, my sons, the best thing you can do is you go out there and breathe out. How do you breathe out? We go out and witness to others about Jesus. We share with others about Jesus. I know this can be very challenging because a lot of people, you go try to tell them about Jesus, awatakuskiza. But you just do your part. Because when you witness, it's not upon us to make people get born again. When you do your part, it is God or the Holy Spirit that enables that person to make the decision to allow the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives as their Lord and their Savior. When you get born again, you can actually start by witnessing to people you are very comfortable witnessing to. For instance, you can start with your parents, you can start with your siblings, you can start with a Christian, somebody you know who is a true believer in, at school, a friend. But don't just, don't be very quiet. Because when you go out and you're witnessing to someone, you encourage somebody. They are going through a lot of issues and you just encourage them and they see ah so even as i go through whatever i'm going through it is still possible to accept the lord jesus christ as my lord and savior so no matter what i'm going through when christ is in my life he's going to help me to overcome my weaknesses and he's going to help me to be strong no matter what i'm going through and in christ i can also be able to get victory over everything that may be challenging me at this particular moment so boys and girls, when we do this, when we go to church and fellowship with others, when we read the Bible, when we obey the word of God, and when we witness to others, we are really going to be able to grow. Because we are going to have given, we will we'll have given God an opportunity to come into our lives, to feel that he is our friend and we are his friends. If you don't give God a chance, God is very gentle. The Holy Spirit is not going to force himself into your life and now that you have chosen him to come into our lives to be our lord and our savior what else do we have to do than allow him to come into our lives he knows all the issues you are going through he knows your needs he knows what you lack he knows when you're sick but he just desires for your fellowship he just desires it's like when you have a friend na kupigi simu you wonder i'm born and pigi simu but when they call you you are happy Okay, the same applies with God. He's happy when we reach out to him. So tonight I want to encourage us. This is a new work we have started. Maybe some got born again recently. Maybe some have been born again for a while. And by the way, guys, you only get born again once. Kuna kuwa kila holiday, kila, 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 kila camp, kila crusade. You just get born again once. Once you have allowed the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, into your heart to take over, he's there and there for life. Huh? So hakuna kushinda unakoka. But in case, in case you backslide, you just come back to him, you repent, and 
you continue in your relationship with Christ. So tonight I want to encourage you, let us do these four activities and the Lord Jesus is going to help us to grow more and more in our walk with him. Um, time is not on our side. I don't want us to discuss too much because if you talk too much, I feel for now that is what I'd like for us to share. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name tonight for the word that you have spoken unto each one of us. You know each one of us by name and we know the plans you have of our lives. They are plans of good and not of evil to give each one of us a hope and a future. We have chosen you as our Lord and Savior. But we know that as for you, even before we chose you, you already knew us and you had chosen us to be your friends. How we are praying tonight that you may come and help us to walk in this walk of faith. For we know it is not by our own power, it is not by our own might, but it is only by your spirit that we are going to walk right with you, Lord. Come and take over Holy Spirit in our works, in our words, in our thoughts. May you come and take preeminence. I thank you for every boy, every girl in this meeting tonight. I thank you even for every mentor. You know the issues in our lives. You know the issues at home, in school, in our society, Lord. Wherever we are hard pressed, you pray for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. In this walk of faith, may you show us you way, Joe Jesus. May you make it look possible for us. We know the thief comes to kill, to, to, to steal, and to destroy. But for us tonight, you are confident for we are coming in the name of Jesus. Help us to go through this walk. Help us every day of our lives. We are thankful. We are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So boys and girls, thank you so much for Amen. joining us tonight. Uh, Mentor Douglas, kindly. Let's give uh, Lamu Shakiri, part of our mentors. Bache Flowers. Yeah, come with us on the key. Yeah, and just give some flowers. You have people who are not able to join. 